Hey everybody, it's Helen Hillix, intuitive counselor and spiritual activist. I am so excited today to welcome my special guest, Salt Freedom, who is the rock star of brand media consulting. And um, I, I really am so happy to have her here. I will talk a little bit more about the unlikely pairing of a therapist and a, a branding expert. But for now, I want to talk about our topic for today, which is why is it so hard for us to be real? Why is it so hard for us to be authentic? Why is it so hard for us to be honest in this world? And I want to start out by saying it's not our fault. It is absolutely not our fault. It's our whole society from the time we are born, basically, you know, we, our little egos are there saying, how can I survive? How can I survive? And, you know, the, the answer to that question when we're tiny little primitive beings is to please other people. In essence, the ego is part of us because it's our awareness of our individual selves. And today, in this conversation with Salt Freedom, we're going to talk about how to do that, how to overcome that early brainwashing, basically, and, and break through that to the freedom of becoming yourself. But back to where it starts is that we learn how to please primarily, you know, our parents or the first people, right? That's who we learn how to please. And, you know, if our mother wants us to be quiet so that she doesn't have more migraines, then we learn to be quiet. We don't learn to be our authentic selves. We learn to be quiet. If our fathers want us to be aggressive on the sports field, because that makes him feel good because he didn't have any boys and I'm a girl, then I'm going to be aggressive. Whether I'm really that way or not, I'm going to be that way. And when you don't want to share your toys with your sibling, you know, and no, it's mine, it's mine. And your mom says, or your dad says, or whatever says, that's not nice, Johnny. That's not nice. You're supposed to share. It's nice to share. And of course, children need to be guided in, in, to share because it is not our natural tendency to share. But what ends up happening most of the time is that, oh, I feel bad. I must be a bad kid because I don't want to share. And so we get all these messages about who we really are is not okay. And, you know, if you're fat, you get messages you should be thin. If you're thin, you get messages you should be, you know, more voluptuous. And so on and so on and so on. If you don't do well in school, you get the message that you should be doing better. And if you do well in school, then you get the message from your peers that you're just a smarty pants. And so you want to hide that you're smart. So it's just everywhere. It's everywhere, the messages that you should follow a certain way of being in order to be accepted. And why is this important? Is because in the primitive times, if we didn't comply and adhere to the collective principles and rules, we'd get thrown out of the tribe. And what would happen to us back in the caveman days if we got thrown out of the tribe? We were dead. And we carry that primitive fear inside us. Of, of being anything outside the box. And so it's, again, it's not our faults that we are afraid of being our authentic selves. It is not. But what happens when we're not is that we shrivel up inside and die. And I'm not going to talk too much about that because I know Salt will talk more about that in, in her own experience with it. So I want to move on, but that's some basic ideas of why we are afraid to be who we really are. Now, let's move on to what can we do about it. So I want to introduce Salt Freedom. Salt is known as the rock star of brand media, and, and she really is. She is just a light. She is a light everywhere she goes. She's the voice behind the Salty Truth podcast, which is an amazing podcast if you haven't listened to it. It's so, she makes it so much fun to explore all the topics that she dives into, and she's not afraid of diving into anything. So if you haven't heard that podcast, definitely go to The Salty Truth. And she's the CEO of Salt and Light Media, the creator of Rockstar Branding for Believers, where she's on a mission to unleash a revival of love, leadership, and spiritual gifts all over planet Earth. So without further ado, I wanna introduce my special guest, Salt Freedom. 
I love wow. having you here. Wow. Well, that it's awesome to be here. And it's so weird listening to someone read your bio. It feels like this strange out of body experience where you're like, yes, that is my mission. And how am I doing on my mission? And wow, that person sounds cool. Wait, is that me? <laughs> so, you know, I'm really glad to be here and I'm glad to talk about this topic and thank you for introducing it. I was, I was listening to you. I thought to myself, you know, you don't even really need to understand or adopt the whole primitive, primal, caveman day philosophy to know that when you're a kid, you better be on your best behavior or you might find yourself in trouble. And if mama's not happy, nobody's happy. <laughs> and right. so I, I totally hear what you're saying with that people pleasing sort of a framework that we grow up in and the difficulties that we have as independent autonomous adults to transition over into who do we want to be who do we choose to be every day what what reputation do we want to have and how can we authentically show up in the world so that we're not selling our soul and uh, you know i i love that so we want we're not selling our souls and you know i want to throw in the the reality that it isn't just people pleasing either because I, that's all I talked about, but I, I, the other side of that is that there are people who say, there's nothing I can do to please my parents, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to be bad. You know, I'm going to act out, I'm going to, you know, do drugs, I'm going to, whatever, join a gang, I'm going to, I'm going to get bad grades, you know, which is really another cry for help of please pay attention to me. But it's, it's a way that people also sell their souls in that they they are not being authentically themselves either. So often teenagers are, I'm, I'm gonna get all Fs because my parents want me to get all A's. Well, that's not who they authentically are either, is it? <laughs> yeah, I totally hear you. And you know, one of the truths I live by is there's a difference between a rebellion and a revolution. And yes. so if you're rebelling against someone, they're really controlling you just as much as if you were doing everything to please them in that who you're being is directly in contrast to who they want. So there's no autonomy or independence in that conversation either. I love that you said that. That is one of my primary beliefs is that there is a difference between rebellion and revolution. I love that. So talk a little bit, would you talk a little bit about your story, your life, and how you became Salt Freedom? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Do you have 10 hours? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, well, we'll, we'll take the one-hour version. <laughs> <laughs> well, let maybe uh, ask me some questions you feel will be helpful to your audience. You know, I've had such a journey in, you know, uh, coming to the Lord and claiming freedom from an eating disorder and supporting entrepreneurs to be fully self-expressed and you know, and well, being married and a mom, I mean, oh my gosh, I, it, what would serve you best? <laughs> okay, what I would like to hear about is how becoming someone who supports others to be authentically themselves and find their true passion in life, how did you come to that as your mission on earth? Mm, lots of people pleasing and the uncomfortableness of what that, that means and the life that that builds. You know, I had to learn a lot of really tough lessons. One of them being, you know, trying to please someone really means becoming exactly who they would be if they were living your life. <laughs> and and uh, that didn't that didn't work well for me. You know, it's almost like mind reading in a way because we can never know exactly what someone else wants or expects. And so as growing up as a teenager who was very smart, uh, very creative, very, uh, I would say, it wasn't rebellious. It was, however, questioning, like super curious and wanting to reinvent things and bring a freshness or a newness to what exists, you know, and feeling really driven by creativity. I got mislabeled as being a rebel and being negative. And because of that, and because of so many people telling me that's who I was, eventually that's who I became. It's like, I didn't stop to say, okay, is that really me? I answered the questions, why are you so rebellious? Why are you, why do you make everything so hard? That was something that was spoken over me a lot when I was a kid. Why do you make everything so hard? Well, and, uh, and no one taught you to say, because I'm a seeker. Well, yeah, or, or I think when we ask why questions, what we're doing to the person who's receiving that question is 
we're not asking, is this true? We're asking, why is this true? So it's presupposed Absolutely. that I make things so hard. And it has my brain go, why do I do that? Instead of going, well, do I make things so hard? Or if you were living my life, you would do things in a way that you perceive to be easier and I'm not doing that. So therefore, by your qualification, I make life so hard. <laughs> you know, I, I love what you're saying. I really love what you're saying. And I want to underscore that, Salt, because for all the parents who are going to be listening to this podcast, I really want you to stop and think about the way, and, and it doesn't even have to just be with kids. It's, I mean, I know I've done this to my husband too, you know, is why are you blah, 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 rather than how are you feeling that's coming out as blah, blah, blah. You know, if somebody had stopped and said, Salt, how are you feeling about your life that is showing up this way? That would have been a completely different conversation that would have led you as a teenager to being able to be authentically yourself. So I just want to say that because it's such a simple thing. And one of the things I love to give my audience is tools, simple tools that we can use every single day to improve our lives, to improve our relationships with ourselves, with each other, with God. You know, and one of those is to ask, how do you feel? What's going on underneath this behavior? And that's, that was a great example. It was mm -hmm. a great example. I like, I like that question a lot. And I, I also like, what do you mean when you say, and then repeating back their statement to them? Because I know it, I've had conversations with people who it seems like, we don't actually believe the same thing, but it's because we use language differently. And when we use this word, we mean something different than the other person. And so asking questions is a way to investigate that without having this knee jerk reaction. You know, I feel like the world is in a smart off right now and I don't oh like gosh. it. <laughs> I oh, feel like I, everyone I couldn't agree to... more. Yeah, we're, we're all, I mean, it is the human condition to not feel good enough. And it is the human condition to be in fear of looking stupid. Uh, and so it's like, I feel like we have this sort of hardness to ourselves when we show up to conversations and we're so afraid to be proven wrong or look bad that we're not actually listening and we're not seeking to understand and we're not asking questions like you said and we're making assumptions about what other people mean instead of being invested in understanding them and it's causing so much conflict and it's causing what i call a smart off like well this well that well this it's like everyone's just waiting for their turn to talk and nobody's really listening I love that. Another one of the, the paradoxes or, or, the, or the contradictions that I really feel is important to distinguish is between being understood and understanding. I did a live video about that recently. You know, what's the difference? We're all so invested in being understood. You know, that's exactly what you're saying. You know, this and this and this and this, but we are not invested in being understanding. And I, you know, from my perspective, I don't know what, what your spiritual perspective would be on this, but from my perspective, we are all one. You know, we are all parts of God. And there, but we don't act that way. We do not act that way. We accentuate our differences rather than looking for our similarities. And again, that, you know, bringing us back to the topic always of how are we blocked from being our authentic selves? Hello, I mean, if we don't know that one, you know, foundational piece that we are all one, that if I'm doing something painful, I'm hurting you. And so it's like, I can't be my authentic self if I don't realize that, that we are all one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I completely believe that God created every human on planet earth. I don't think you're an accident or happenstance or, you know, you are definitely intel intelligently designed and created by the living God. And I also think it's okay for everyone to not agree. And I think that's been somehow made not okay anymore. Um, and I think that we do get to tolerate each other in love for having different beliefs.
And it's got to be okay because otherwise it's a smart off. Otherwise it becomes aggressive, attacking, um, dehumanizing, trying to win. And nobody wins <laughs> when that happens. So I think having honest, curious, uh, even even having a debate, even even having a conversation where there are two sides that don't agree, that can be done with such respect and such curiosity and such love. And it's okay if at the end we don't go, oh, we are, we're more similar than different. We can be totally different and we can still be loving, right? So I think there is a, there's a falseness going around that we somehow have to win people over to our perspective in order to live in peace. And I don't actually think that's true. I, I couldn't agree more. And I also want to touch on what you said about, you know, we don't have to come away feeling that we have more in common than we have different. I, I don't know what the percentages are, but I do believe, you know, coming from 35 years of experience as a therapist, that we all have the same basic needs. We all need to be loved. We all need to feel safe. We all need validation. We all need health. We all need recreation. You know, we do have some essential basic similarities, again, because we are all human beings. And I completely agree with you that it's fine if we don't agree on particular principles or points of view. But if we would learn to support each other in acknowledgement that we need connection, we need mutual support, you know, again, we would be creating, we'd be co-creating a safe world and, and that too relates to why we're afraid of being ourselves is because the world doesn't feel like a safe place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of fear about being who you authentically are because there's the fear of being judged for that. And, you know, being judged for your false persona is easier to take. <laughs> the closer someone is to me, the more their angry or judgmental words can hurt me, right? And the closer or the more uh, in my inner circle of knowing, like the more I reveal myself to them, the more I open myself up to being hurt by that person. And so I think a lot of times we know that. So we instinctually walk around with these false personas that may look great on Instagram, but they're not actually our real life or who we really are. We just think that they're going to get more likes or more follows or protect us from, you know, haters or judgment when doing that actually blocks us from feeling loved at all. Because even if someone loves us, they love the fake us. And right. if they attack us, well, then we feel a little bit more um, vaccinated from that attack because they don't really know who we are. So right. being vulnerable is such an act of strength and it takes such courage <laughs> to show up as your real self. And like you said, it's attached to our basic needs to be loved and to belong. And so if we don't do it in courage, then we're going to starve ourselves of one of the fundamental things that we live for. Wow. We could talk for an hour about those couple of sentences that you just said, seriously. Um, you know, the whole idea that we we get to be vulnerable in order to be really truly connected is such a, a powerful statement and and another word beside vulnerable is exposed you know we get to be exposed in order to be real we get to be exposed there is no way to be real without exposing who you really are and i couldn't agree more with the statement of we'll never feel loved if we are putting on a persona to everyone and it happens all the time. I mean, people get married with a persona and then after they're married, the person gets to know who they really are. And it's like, Oh my gosh, you know, I did not. I did know. that. I did that. <laughs> did you? Oh yeah. I, got I think we all have. Oh yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Like my husband had the biggest bait and switch ever. Like, I don't had, think any other man could have gone through what he did and for us to still be together. I mean, I think it's a miracle. <laughs> Can you say that again? I, I didn't hear what you were saying, really, that you oh. did it, that you, your husband had the biggest what? I said he had the bait. My husband had the biggest bait and switch, bait and switch. Like who he married is not who he married, <laughs> who he thought he married. <laughs> and who I thought he married isn't who I actually am. And so, you know, I've been through this massive personal transformation journey. Can you uh, talk a little bit about that? Oh, so, gosh. 
Yeah. So what, when was, I met the, my what husband, was the bait and switch? Because I know people are going to resonate with that. Oh, gosh. Yeah. When I met my husband, we were both border patrol. So I was in a super A type, um, you know, environment where you had to be like emotionless, hardcore. You were, you were, you know, chasing people down, fight, physically fighting with them, handcuffing them, you know, placing them under arrest. You were rummaging through. We worked in, in ships. So we were rummaging through. Um, the the containers on the ship or even like confined space entry doing these examinations underneath and the machinery that drives the ship i mean it was super hardcore and so who i had to be in that environment was totally not someone that i authentically am but it was someone that i needed to be to survive there and be be treated with respect and so that's where we wow. met and that, that blows my mind oh, girl it was hilarious in fact when i first met my husband he was like coming for a ride along. So he was a, he was a guest for the day with our team and he was one of several. We had been going through so many ride alongs because people wanted to join our unit. And so he, he, he noticed that my flashlight was on while we were rummaging through something and he told me that my flashlight was on and I just looked at him and I looked down and kept doing my thing and didn't turn my flashlight off because it was me saying like, you're not going to come in here and be telling me what to do. <laughs> you know, it's like step off, you know, back up and <laughs> let me do my thing. So it was, it was really right. funny. The fact that we even got married is hilarious. Uh, That's but, quite an, that is such an incredible metaphor, I'm sure, for things that happened later in your relationship. You know, you're not going to come in here and tell me how to run my job. Yeah. Oh, totally. Like such an independent soul. And at the same time, you know, I had a raging eating disorder, which I was dealing with. And then, you know, since we got married, I've been through, on a journey to become free from an eating disorder. I've transitioned from a paycheck collector, you know, working from the government with a pension to an entrepreneur, which is a whole different you know, ball game, a whole different risk level. Uh, and my husband is, he's just grown so much in risk tolerance in this whole process because this is not something he would have chosen. So he literally married, you know, a completely different human than who I am today. And he, he's been on the ride with me and it's been a lot of tears, a lot of fights, a lot of victories. Uh, and we would not have made it through without God. I have no idea uh, how people do marriage without God. To me, having to consider another human being for everything that I do and, and every choice that I make and, and rear, you know, bringing up children in the world. I mean, talk about activating conflict, <laughs> you know, parenting styles are so different. So it's just a miracle. that we're together. So how did you go from that to, to being a branding expert? Oh yeah. Well, when I was, so when I claimed freedom from my eating disorder, it was my mission at that time to support other women to do that. I know so many women struggle with body image issues and, you know, food issues. And, and it really all comes down to what we were talking about at the beginning, which is the belief that there's something wrong with me. Like I'm not good enough. Uh, God's forgotten about me. Um, I'm never going to be blank enough, you know, and just the whole comparing yourself to everyone in the world and feeling out of control about certain things in your environment and and so all of that together for me just caused me to um, go on this journey of you know actually what what happened was my son was born and it was the first time when I was pregnant that was the first time I was nice to my body in over a decade because I didn't want the baby growing inside of me to be the victim of my abuse of food right. and so as soon as he was born I was right back to my self-destructive ways trying to get my body back get control back and I realized through that process, like if I don't get this handled, then I'm going to give all of this toxic self-destructive behavior to my son and he doesn't deserve that. And so that was really when I decided to handle my eating disorder and going from that really dark place to incomplete freedom from that, that, you know, birthed a business for me uh, in coaching and I developed a program and it was amazing and I loved it. And I think you can outgrow a conversation. So mm -hmm. for me, it just got like to create the no like and trust factor and to really be in the world of your audience means to tell your story and create that bridge of understanding and knowing and, and, and you know, building the program and having the conversations that lead women out of that darkness. 
it just became a story that was no longer true for me. I was so free that I couldn't identify as much as I wanted to or think that you should be able to in order to do that work. And I felt like I was holding myself hostage with an old story. And so God was really saying like, hey, it's time to move on. And here's the thing. Everyone's always saying to you, who does your graphic design? Who does your video editing? How did you get your message to be like that? You know, like who, who helps you with your copywriting? And the answer to all those things was always, well, me. I do it. Well, I do it. Well, I do it. <laughs> right? <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, if I'm doing all those things and, you know, it's a big, steep learning curve to go from paycheck collector to entrepreneur. Um, then maybe that is what I want to do next, you know? And so I started to support people to do that and I'm absolutely loving it. That's, that's wonderful. And I, I, again, going back to the topic of, of being our authentic selves, I love the point you're making salt that you can outgrow one authentic self or one aspect of your authentic self. And that, and people, I, I, I believe that, our kind of, again, instinctual desire for security and safety, or of course, it's really just the illusion of it. The, the illusion of security and safety gets us stuck sometimes, whether it's in a paycheck kind of a job, or even it's an entrepreneurial uh, aspect of ourselves that we have outgrown. And we, but, but sometimes people get stuck in it and they really don't have the passion for it anymore, but they're getting paid well. So I, I love that, and I think that it can, it can apply to so many things. And mm -hmm. one of the things that this brings up um, is when do you fight to recreate what you're doing as in a marriage, you know, when you can say, I've outgrown my husband, but have you really outgrown your husband? Or are you both needing to be authentic in some other way that, you're, that you haven't got yet and that you need this challenge of this conflict this butting up against this feeling like maybe you should move on and sometimes i know that's true sometimes people do they just have to move on because there's no way that there's no partnership there or whatever it is but so often it's that we are afraid of being our authentic selves and challenging our partner to be their authentic selves and then recreating our marriage into something new, just as we do, you know, with an entrepreneurial project. So part of being authentic is accepting the reality that we are constantly growing. I mean, I know, you know, Jenna Phillips Ballard and, you know, I love one of the things that she says in the trainings that she does in uh, Ascension Leadership Academy is you're either green and growing or you're ripe and rotting. Mm hmm. And mm -hmm. I love that. And that's what you're talking about is. Yeah, you know, I love the quote, if you knew me yesterday. So it says, if you knew me yesterday, you don't know me. And that seems extreme. However, for myself and for the entrepreneurs that I serve, it's really not because we are what I like to call growth junkies. <laughs> So we are constantly learning, reading, taking part in experiences, growing in our friend circles and, and partnerships. And for me, the really important part is growing in God and understanding, you know, who God is and what God teaches and what God's plan is for me. Because my best ideas are, are, are ripe and rotting <laughs> compared to what God's plan is for me. And so it's like that constant evolution, which requires consistent courage because it does require courage to reinvent things. It requires courage to, uh, to tell people around you that you're reinventing things. You know, we all have agreements with the people we do life with. This is who I am. This is what I stand for. This is how I work. This is how I love. This is how I, you know, live. And then when we want to challenge those, then the people around us are like, wait a minute, that's not our agreement. <laughs> you know, this is how we got married or this is how we do kids or this is how we do life. And what do you mean you want to change all that up? And, you know, having an aligned vision for your family, your relationship and your business, with the people who it impacts because just like you said every choice we make impacts you know we like to think that we get to make our own choices and that it's our you know we get to define our own life however every choice we do make does impact the people that are around us and when we love them we want to consider them and that's a really tough I mean I just want to make the choices I want to make and move on I would much rather do that than keep you know having these conversations however I care about how my choices impact the people that I love. And I think it's respectful to have those conversations. Well, I, I agree completely. And I, I, again, want to highlight something that you're saying, which is that the only way 
and this sounds kind of contradictory to some listeners perhaps, but the only way to be your authentic self is to be guided by the divine forces, whatever those are to you, you know, is to listen to guidance. And, and our ego tells us, that's not me. You know, I, I want to do what I want to do. But that is really not authentically you. That is just one little part of you. That's just the ego that says that. But your full self, you know, your whole self is in, in, inexorably connected to that oneness you know to god and if we don't allow ourselves to connect however you do it prayer meditation uh you know whatever techniques you use to connect and plug in and get those what what now are called downloads you know from the divine then you're then you're going to be dominated by your fear or your husband's fear or your kid's fear or you know, mommy, you're going to work again? Well, you know, but if you feel divinely guided to do that, then you say, honey, I feel divinely guided to do it. And someday you're going to feel divinely guided to do something. And I get to have your support because this really is for the highest good of all. If I'm doing what is for the highest good of me and I feel divinely guided to do it, then I, I get to teach my family around me that it's for the highest good of all. And yeah. the same thing, we don't have to, we don't have to agree. We just have to believe the same principle. I hear what you're saying. And I think that there's a humility required to live like that. And uh, it's, it's the humility to know that there are things that you don't know that you don't know. <laughs> yes. And if you're unwilling to, because it does take courage to live a life inside of a yes about what you don't know that you don't know and yes. that and so if if that's <laughs> what you've agreed to do then you're gonna you know you're gonna be failing forward is what's gonna happen and you know if you believe that what happens in your life is happening for you then you're going to have the perspective of gathering all of the silver linings and the lessons and moving forward in you know a more strategic or strengthened uh, way. And if you have a fear-based paradigm where you feel like things are happening to you and you're victim to them, then you're going to keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where you're you're not living in what you don't know that what you don't know that you don't know because you you're not stepping out there. You're you're keeping and this was my world of my eating disorder was so small. It was like if I couldn't be the best, if I couldn't be perfect, if I wasn't guaranteed success, ain't no way I'm doing that. And my, and my world just got so so small to the point where I was imploding on myself and it was all because I didn't I didn't believe in myself I didn't believe that God had my back I didn't trust in any what ifs I didn't take any risks and uh, and I think that the, a life without risks is really boring and at some point the boredom outweighed the fear for me <laughs> well thank God because you know you're a gift to the world and thank God because of this message that's coming out today because many of our listeners are living that life you just described. The life of imploding on ourselves. The life of uh, having our world get smaller and smaller and smaller because we cannot tolerate any risk. I mean, that is, that is the key. That it's the key to being able to be authentic, to be honest, to be open, to explore who I really am and why am I here? What's my purpose? You know, I can't explore that. I can't show who I really am if I'm not willing to take any risks. It, it's, it really is the key. Right. Yeah. And if you're not failing and you're not taking risks, then you're not growing. And for me, not growing is, feels like death now you know and death. before it felt like death to risk and now it feels like death to wake up to the same day every day like that feels like death to me i love <laughs> I'm that moving the furniture all the time helen like i can't even be in my office with the same furniture week after week because i don't want things to feel stale or creatively stunted like creating co-creating with god and like being self-expressed and being on adventures and trying new things and it's just so much a part of oxygen to me that even the furniture has to move <laughs> it's so funny because i'm on vacation right now but i told my husband i'm 
I'm in the mood where I want to change up all kinds of stuff in our house. I, it just has to go. It's got to change. And we bought a new Burl table yesterday. I mean, it's like, I can't wait to get in there because I feel so different. Mm. And I'm with you. I am totally with you. And it's so easy. You know, just last week or a couple of weeks ago, I was sitting there thinking, you know, I used to love to change the house constantly, but you know, I haven't wanted to for a little while, but you know, part of that is I've been so obsessed with launching this online business. But part of it is that that little ego that sneaks back in there and says, you know, things are okay the way they are. And so it's, it's like every day is the time to blow that up, however it is, however you blow that up. And, uh, you know, you're so right that w a life without change is death. And we, again, the ego teaches us that survival is the only thing that matters. The literal physical survival is the only thing that matters. And the truth is to our souls is that our physical survival does not mean that much. It's, it's that we get to risk that physical survival, even though we, we hardly ever actually risk our physical survival, but the ego tells you everything is a survival risk, right? Don't do that, you know? Yeah, don't, don't say what you really think, because someone might challenge you on it, and then you might not have the right smart-off answer for it, and then you will surely die. <laughs> exactly. But, it, but again, it takes you back to those days, those primitive, primitive days when if you displeased your mother, she wouldn't feed you, you would have died. And it just never grows up. It's still coming from that ridiculous, primitive place. So it's so true that that our ego tells us we will die if we risk anything, but that the truth is we are already dying if we don't. I totally get it. And you know, it's funny because I, before I had kids, it was so easy to throw my parents under the bus. <laughs> now, that oh, yeah. kids, now that I've had kids, I'm like, darn, like I try my absolute best. I'm using every emotional intelligence tool on my tool belt every day. And some days I don't show up how I want to show up. And so I'm, I'm, you know, yes, I ask questions and yes, I'm like, what do you mean exactly by that? And if you were in charge, how would you handle this situation? And you know, like, so there is a lot of that. And at the same time, I know every kid's going to need therapy. <laughs> I mean, Amen, sister. <laughs> there is no way, despite my best efforts, that I'm going to bring up two kids who don't spin a story or don't throw me under the bus for something. And they're going to get to reinvent their perspective about how that was for them and how they can use it to something beautiful moving forward. So I definitely have a lot more empathy for parents and their short failing, uh, shortcomings. <laughs> you know, now that I am one doing my absolute best. <laughs> well, I, I, good. I'm, I'm glad that you see it and have that compassion for your parents. And I, I know you have compassion for yourself too, because we're human beings. We're going to make mistakes. But I love the other point you brought up that, you know, there's no way you're going to bring up two kids without who, who aren't going to need therapy. I wish our society would see coaching and therapy and workshops and so forth as simply a part of our education that's not provided at school it, it yeah. because it is it, it and that's what i tell my clients i said you know i am just educating you in a way that you were not educated at school that that's all it is it doesn't mean you're crazy or you're weird or whatever because you want therapy it means you want to grow it means you get to grow and again, going back to the topic of how do you become authentic and honest and open about who you are, is you get a ton of support. You get a ton of support, however that looks to you, you know, from your church, your synagogue, your, your mosque, you know, your tribe, your workshop buddies, you know, whatever it is, therapy, uh, you know, OA, AA, NA, SA, tons of things. So. I'd like you to talk about a couple of the principles. You know, I know that your, your spiritual faith is incredibly central to your life. And I'm sure that there are beliefs in that uh, model of living that are precious to you. 
and I and so include those include whatever you want in talking about a couple of the tools that you believe are central to people becoming authentically themselves and I'd also like you to talk a little bit about how you do that with your branding clients you know how do you personally help people get in touch with their authentic selves and in the process of that maybe you'll talk about the tools Mm, yeah, well, we we definitely start every brand with a process called Spirit Revival. And there are a lot of reasons for that. One is we tend to see what's wrong with us and not what's awesome about us. You know, we tend to be contrasting ourselves to who we admire in the world. We're seeing their, you know, greatest hits highlight reel on Instagram and we're feeling very small. Right. And so it's important for us to remember that we've been through a lot. And if we take the time to look at our journey, there's going to be a lot of guideposts there that are showing us, you know, at the time we didn't understand why our heart got broken or why our prayer didn't get answered or why that horrible thing happened to us where we really were so young that it did happen to us. And a lot of times those things are exactly what we're meant to use moving forward. Not that they happened because God did them to us, but right. we live in a fallen world. We live with human beings who have the freedom of choice. And sometimes, like we talked about earlier, those choices that other people make affect us negatively. And there's a lot that can be gathered and, and paid forward from that. So Spirit Revival is really about looking at your earthly journey and all of the wins and learns, looking at your intelligent design, what comes easily to you, what your spiritual gifts are through a variety of tests, and then looking at all of that together and going, okay, so based on all of this, there are many options that have revealed themselves about what it, what my, you know, calling could be right now. And that's where people get stuck a lot is they think when they pick a calling, when they pick a, a niche or a specialty for their business, that it's like a forever jail. It's almost like that B movie where once you're a B and you pick a job, you do it till you die. <laughs> and it's just like, feels like such a prison. And so what I like to say is it's, it's, you're saying yes to what's next you will have multiple soul callings in your life. And it's about doing this one right now. It's not that you'll never do anything later. And you know, my transition from government, you know, <laughs> a really high, high level, high energy, high aggression system uh, of government, you know, checks all the way to entrepreneurialism and eating disorders and now over in branding, like that's just a major evolution. And I can see how it makes sense. I can see how everything that I went through, even in my teenage years, makes sense for thought leadership right now. I, I often share a story about how I was being so bullied and so picked on for being unwilling to look like everyone else and talk like everyone else and be interested in what everyone else is interested in. Um, and there were a lot of labels put on me because of that. And I really didn't have many friends. And the level of bullying got so intense that I ended up aligning myself with a group of people who looked scary and nobody seemed to mess with them. And in my naivety, I did not know that these group of people uh, were skinheads that painted oh, wow. a symbol. Yes, they painted a symbol on themselves every day. And I didn't even know what that meant. But in order to stop getting threatened, at school, I aligned myself with them and actually put that symbol on my hand and walked around with it, not because I even knew what that was, but because that meant to me, I'm with them, so you're not going to hit me over the head with that skateboard again. <laughs> and when I got challenged by an adult in a pool hall one day, do you know what's on your hand? And I had no answer for it. And they said, you should really know what you stand for before you walk around with that symbol. I went into the bathroom. I tried to wash it off. It, it was still kind of like lightly there. And I remember hiding my hand the whole time, going home and finding out what it was and being just completely horrified. And so why did that happen? Well, now I know it happened because in brand media, one of the things that I'm very passionate about is to know what you stand for and why and to be able to back it up. Because I think we are unconsciously copycatting a lot of times. We just take what other people say, if we consider themselves to be an expert or a leader, we just take it at face value, adopt it as a truth. It goes right through any critical thinking filter. And then we start talking about it like it's true. And I think a lot of falseness exists in the world as a result of unconscious copycatting. And it can happen in how your brand looks, how your brand speaks, what your brand believes. And it's an erosion of you know, self-awareness 
this and of adopting and, and studying and researching what you are going to live your life and ultimately speak as your truth. And I think that that's really, really at the core of a powerful brand is to have self-awareness, to stop the unconscious copycatting, and to consciously decide how you're going to look and speak and believe, and then with courage to share that authentically with the world. That, that is such a mouthful. <laughs> I mean... I know. I know, girl. I mean, but, you know, it's so amazing, though, Salt, because what you're talking about really is a deeply psychological, spiritual experience. And that's why I knew I wanted you on the show, really, you know, that that I knew that that was true, that you took people there, that you go deep with people and help them. And it doesn't matter whether you're trying to find your entrepreneurial, passionate brand or you're just trying to be an authentic person. It's really all the same journey. And speaking about, you know, you were hiding in the skinhead world to, to protect yourself. I mean, how common is that? How many of the young people who join in uh, the skinheads or a gang or whatever, they don't really authentically resonate with that message. They just don't want to be hurt. And they feel like they're going to be safe if they join into X, Y, or Z, just like if you if you are looking for a brand and you don't know who you are, you might pretend that you're this way or that way when it's not really authentically you either. So it's it's a very similar process and it's very thorough. And I so appreciate, again, I appreciate your particular way of doing it because I think there are lots and lots of people who are doing branding out there who are not doing it that way. Yeah, well, you know, I would say that there are a lot of there's a lot of false belief again about what, about what branding is. And so my definition of branding is not simply the optical identity of how you show up, you know, in pixel form. It's about the the heart and the soul of what you stand for and how you speak about it and the proof that you rely on that it is true. Right. And so we can get into the debate of capital T truth and little t truth as in personal truth. However, I think it's really, you know, as moral creatures, we will not allow ourselves to be successful if we are not aligned with what we're saying. So if we're pulling, putting out a false persona or if we're copycatting, you know, we won't allow ourselves to ultimately achieve the vision that we had for our business if we feel like we're being a sellout. You know, and so I think it's really important. I posted something the other day and it was about how being loved for a false persona causes more anxiety than being judged for being our truest self. Yes, I loved that. I loved that post. And it's, it's so true that only when we're living in a place of integrity do we have self-love. I mean, there is no way around that. And I, I think that I love that because I feel like that's, if, if the audience takes away one thing from this talk, it's what you just said, that mm. the only way to really feel self-love is to be in integrity with ourselves and with the universe, however you describe that, with God. That's, that's it. You will not find peace and self-love any other place. I don't care if you make yourself look exactly like Kim Kardashian, you know, and and get a ton of money, you know, it's not going to make you happy. And that, that peace of mind is really the only thing that makes you happy. And it comes from being in integrity with ourselves. Yeah. And I think for, for me, it also comes from forgiveness. You know, I could never be a, a great person all the time. I'm a human. I have selfish desires. I have selfish motivations. I, I fail. I, I put myself before other people. Every human does that if we're Absolutely. honest about who we are. Right. And so it's like owning our shortcomings, owning when we fail and getting forgiveness. And for me, it's coming to God and being forgiven, not because I think that I'm I'm a terrible person who can never, ever meet, you know, this, this grandiose expectation that God has of me being perfect. No, like 
for me, God sent his son to the world to die on the cross for the penalty of my sin. And I am grateful for that. And I come for mercy and grace. And because I receive it from God, I actually can give it more freely to everyone. If you cannot receive forgiveness for yourself, then you cannot be a vessel of forgiveness for other people. And also the contrary is true. You can't be a vessel if you don't forgive yourself. So I think that's a really powerful thing. It seems like, you know, you can just shove it under the carpet, forget about it, you know, and move on. But really we know, we know where we're incomplete. We know where we're still harboring resent resentment and anger and it blocks us from being loving. It blocks us from being forgiving. It blocks us from being authentic. And when we can really just let all of that go and know that we are imperfect and there's a place we can go with all of our imperfection and be loved for exactly who we are, then I think that's ultimately the purpose of every human. I think the purpose of every human being is to love and glorify God and the calling looks different. So for me, the calling is brand media and everyone can bloom where they're planted. You know, there is no place where God has put you that you cannot shine with his love. And uh, so let's not diminish positions in the world because they're not on a stage. You know, oh my gosh. I'm so glad you said that salt because I get so sick uh, on Instagram and less on Facebook, but Instagram is like constantly just you're barraged with, you know, here's the five steps to making a million dollars. You can be an entrepreneur too. And it's like, that's, I, I love the idea that people get to liberate themselves from small thinking. I love that. But I don't love that people who are not drawn to that, you know, who, who are flourishing in their government job. And there are people who love that structure, who are meant to be there. You know, if, if God made everybody be entrepreneurs, I mean, our world couldn't function. <laughs> I know. I often think about that. I often think about, like, if you're going to be a content producer and that's going to be gratifying and lucrative for you, there have to be content watchers. <laughs> you know? like, exactly. Like exactly. <laughs> I mean, I have a housekeeper that I've had for, you know, 12 years, and I had one before that for, like, 18 years. And I swear, I mean, she is a lifeline to me, an absolute lifeline to me. I don't know what I would do without her. And it, yeah. it, there are so many people in life, and she gets a lot of joy. She said to me once, I feel like every house that I am blessed to clean is my house. And I feel that way about it. This is my home, and I, I feel that way. And so it's like where, I love that, wherever God has planted you, you know, you can shine. And to get over, again, this is also another aspect of being our authentic selves, is to not compare ourselves to everybody else and think that the only way to be, a, a, you know, a successful human being is if we're rich and on the stage, as you said, and if we look this way and that way, I mean, I am so sickened by all of the comparison. I mean, my post today on Instagram is about that, is about let's lift each other up and realize that your success is my success and that not everybody is going to look the same way. You know, my success is in a different manifestation and that's the way it's supposed to be. You know, we can all thrive that way. And I want to, before we close, I want to also emphasize what you said about forgiveness you know, I work with so many clients who've done something, you know, cheated on their wives and they feel the devastating shame and guilt and, you know, and realize that it came from something that happened when they were a child and, you know, that being molested. I mean, it's, it's all connected. And if we cannot forgive ourselves, there is no hope. There is absolutely no hope for humanity if we cannot forgive ourselves and each other. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Evil, the evil of this world wants us to walk around broken and hurting because broken, hurting people hurt other people. And it's the perpetuation of evil and darkness. And exactly. It, yeah. And that is real. Part of the problem. That is real. I don't care whether you believe in the devil or the enemy or the dark side or just the constellation of negative energies in the universe. That is real. And you know, the darkness feeds on darkness and the light feeds on light. And you know, we've got to support the healing of the darkness and have compassion because 
well, this is my belief anyway, that the darkness exists because it's cut off from God, mm-hmm. you know? And so it's like the, let's, let's be compassionate for every human on earth. And in the process of that, we get to be compassionate for ourselves in, in our failing forward process or whatever we're struggling with and to have hope, you know, have hope and have faith. So I want to ask you um, if you have any events or books or, you know, things I want to let people know how to contact you, you know, tell us all about what you've got going on. Yeah, well, we have our first group of believers going through Rockstar right now, so you cannot get in at the moment. (laughs) However, I'm always talking about important things that are on my heart, downloads, like you said, from God, uh, conversations that I feel are important not only for building a brand that captures attention, because you can't change the world if no one's paying attention. Uh, So it's about branding, but a lot of what I post is really about spiritual development. It's about emotional intelligence. So I, I hold those conversations on Instagram. So I would love for you to follow me at salt freedom on Instagram and uh, any, you know, free trainings and things like that are all launched from there. And the other place that I would love for you to, to tune in would be the salty truth podcast. So you can go to salty truth.fm and you will land on the iTunes version of the podcast. We are on several other platforms. If you're podcast platform of choice is not iTunes. Um, And uh, yeah, it's called Salty Truth. And again, you know, we're doing interviews on there talking about topics that relate to branding, business and personal, spiritual and emotional development. So I would love to kick it with you. Come stalk me. Come find me. (laughs) What about a book? Oh gosh. How many people are going to ask me to write a book? Is that a sign or a rabbit trail? I'll have to pray about that. (laughs) I just feel like, you know, the salty truth would be such an awesome title for a book and that, you know, you have already, if you just compiled a book of all the Instagram posts that you've done, that could be the salty truth right there. And people would love it. I I think they would love it anyway. So what resources would you um, send people to who are wanting to become more authentically themselves. I, I know that there, some of the resources are at Salty, uh, at Salt Freedom and the Salty Truth podcast. Um, anything else that comes to mind that might support people, any books or programs or? Um, you know, I, I, will, I will not pretend to know every single awesome program out there in, in emotional not. development or, or, uh, or spiritual development. I will always point people to the Bible, the breathed word of God. I think my pastor always has a great saying, if you want to hear the, from God, then read the Bible out loud. So I will always, always say that where I go first to fight, you know, lies that the world, um, spouts or to combat this unconscious copycatting that even the the most you know committed you know self-expressed people can fall prey to is to to really ask yourself spend time in prayer uh spend time reading the bible and really doing the work to become self-aware about what you believe and why you believe it and i think having a coach to go through you know to me the value of coaching and therapy is in the listening. It is such a rare gift to have someone 100% focused listening to you because it's a gift to you to hear your own words. Even this podcast is a gift to me because I have nothing prepared. I got no notes. I'm just here. <laughs> and right. Me so, neither. Right? So you give me the opportunity to hear what I say in response to your questions, learn more about me, learn where I want to do more research. Maybe what I said, I was like, oh, I could do better there. I'm going to go read more about that. I'm going to dig deeper into that. Um, Or I just learn more about myself and what I'm called to be up to in this world, given the, the container of your listening. So thank you for that. And I think that that is definitely something that everyone should be benefiting from is a 100% you know, in your world listener, whether that's a coach, a therapist, a pastor, whomever, um, to help you to figure out who you are, you know, meant to be in this life apart from glorifying God. So what I take away from that, you know, your particular resource is the Bible. For some listeners, it might not be the Bible. It might be some other spiritual guidance. 
but but whatever it is, we need spiritual guidance. We absolutely need spiritual guidance. Otherwise, we are living only in what we know that we know and what we know that we don't know. <laughs> and that whole other area, come on in, honey. You want to see my daughter? Now, yeah. uh -huh. now it's off school time, so we're... <laughs> so, here, do you want to say hi? Oh, I'm so <laughs> You're so tired. Okay. We're almost okay. done, honey. Thank We're you. We're almost for, done. I'll thank you up. for loaning me your right. mommy. <laughs> so, yeah. So, definitely for me, it's being hu a humble servant in the world, knowing that your success is about making success for other people. It's about being a blessing. It's about focusing out. And when you're doing that and you're busy helping other people solve their problems, then your problems are automatically solved. You're automatically generating income from your business. You're automatically making an army of social proof of, of what you do and how you do it. And I think being a blessing and being a servant to others is the highest calling. It's what Jesus modeled and it's what we get to do to have our best life. I couldn't agree more. Being of service is the highest calling and getting support, getting spiritual support, getting emotional support. And one of the things I loved that you were sharing a couple of weeks ago was about how, how to get back into loving and training your body, you know, and exposing the fact that you were struggling with that. And, you know, again, going back to our topic of being real, you know, don't hide what you're struggling with. Don't hide it and get that spiritual support wherever you find it and that emotional support wherever you find it. And then you're going to feel like you're making progress. And I love the quote of the only evidence of life is growth. And as long as you feel that you're growing, there's hope. Yeah. And don't feel bad if you are taking a break from environments or people that are toxic to your growth. I know for so long I felt bad, like, oh, I feel bad saying no to that. I feel bad to not going to help that person. When that person was naysaying my dreams, they were being the reality check of why things weren't possible. They were constantly being pessimistic. You know, it was like I was allowing my light to be drowned out by their darkness and it was making it so much harder on myself. And when I gave myself permission to bless and release that person, not out of anger, not because I was judging them, but because I realized that their impact on me was not positive. I gave myself a break from that. And sometimes that's a permanent break. And sometimes it's temporary until you build up the fortitude to be able to be light in their darkness. Don't feel bad about it. Get the support you need. And sometimes what, what you're saying is get support. And sometimes support looks like get some distance from what's not serving you and don't make that wrong. I love that. I'm so glad you said that because we cannot say yes to who we authentically are if we cannot say no to that which is not who we authentically are. That's a great one. You should put that truth bomb on your wall. <laughs> okay, baby. I'm putting it on my wall. All right. All right. Well, Salt, thank you so much. I, I just can't thank you enough for taking time out of your busy schedule to be on an unknown podcast You know, with someone that you never met who reached out and said, I feel an affinity with you. Will you support me in this way? And you said, yes. And that really touches my heart. And to me says who you authentically are is a generous and giving person and that you are living your mission of being of service to the world. So thank you. I love you. I've, mm -hmm. I'm with you and I will always support what you're doing. Thank you so much. The greatest compliment I think that you can get as a digital entrepreneur is for someone to meet you in person or to have an intimate experience with you and to say, you're exactly who I thought you were. <laughs> so thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you for that beautiful feedback. I'm really excited to hear the podcast back because it's always fun to listen to a conversation that you had where you were channeling. And I'm just really grateful that you're starting this podcast. I know you've introduced us or interviewed some of my friends already, and I'm excited to listen to, you know, all the interviews you have coming out. I'm sure it's going to be an amazing show. Thank you so much. I'm having a blast doing it. And I love it because this is my passion, you know, is to help change the world by opening our hearts and helping us heal at one person at a time. And I just am so excited about it. And I'm happy at 69 years old to be having yet another iteration of my life. And I feel like I'm just starting again. And I love it. And I oh. hope to always be that way.
what an example you are, right? Like you could totally be defined by that, the, the age of 69 or it can be your new springboard to something new and you get to decide what that is and obviously you've chosen adventure. So keep I, rocking I it, have, girl. <laughs> I have, I, I wanna feel good, I wanna be happy, I wanna feel vibrant and that's how you feel vibrant is to keep reinventing yourself. Just like you said, if you knew me yesterday, you don't know me. Anyway, I love you. I thank you. I'm going to stop recording now because I think we could go on and on forever. And so I'm going to turn off the recording and thank you again. I'll talk to you some other time. Yeah, it was great to be here. I really appreciate it. Now I can actually look at you because I'm always so conscious of like looking at the camera. So that's another reason why I'm so excited to watch it over because like I haven't seen any of your facial affectations or anything. And I just really wanted your, since you're doing it on video, I really wanted the viewer to feel connected and not feel like, you know, they were looking at the top of my hat the whole time. <laughs> I love that. Do you have a YouTube channel? You know, I used to for Salt and Freedom. I haven't made one for uh, Salt and Light yet at all. Um, but when I do, I'll let you know and, and I, I would be happy to post it on there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, thank you okay. again. I'm going to stop recording now. Yeah.